In this video, we're going to be making the crankshaft and connecting rods. Uh, basically, I have my pattern. We're going to have two different size um, steel rods, 3 16 and a 1 8. Uh, so we'll cut out our different segments. And, uh, and I have the uh, metal rods cut out for the connecting uh, for the crankshaft. I'm going to cut out the connecting pieces of the crankshaft. Always drill out the holes first or they'll um, you know it'd be very difficult to drill them out after uh, cutting them out on the scroll saw. Be sure to make some test holes in a piece of scrap just to make sure you may find that your appropriately sized drill bit is actually bigger than the rod you have that's way too loose. You'd want a, a very tight fit. This is the uh, finished connecting rod with the bearing in it. Do a little finish on the uh, wood part, give it a little color, put some uh, tape over the bearings so the finish would obviously have stuck things up pretty good. Take that off. So it's a little, little effort. We got all those on the crankshaft. Um, the crankshaft, once again, isn't really set together yet with anything. It's just held tight with the friction. I uh, want to make sure it works before I secure anything in place. So on the crankshaft, I have these two little fit there. And then we'll intersect with the, the piston. So I now kind of feed things together. I had to cut a bunch of little, well, four small shafts to feed into the piston to connect the connecting rod to the crankshaft. So I'll go through. Okay, on the new engine, we have a couple of um, gap here and gap here. Uh, we need to make a couple spacers to keep this from hitting the side. Over here, I made the spacers by, hard to see, I'm just going to do this, cutting the little, little small sections from a tube that nests well with that, uh, with the size shaft. So what I'll do is I'll put those in on each side and then I'll keep it from rubbing and catching on the ends. Okay, all right, we're done with the crankshaft. Pistons are all in there. Everything's connected up with the connecting rods. I made a flywheel. It doesn't actually need a flywheel since it's a continuous flow of power once the uh, air is hooked up. And uh, for this engine, I'm gonna design a new way to apply the air pressure to the tubes or vacuum. Uh, rather than having a bunch of separate splitters like I did on the radial air engine, I'm going to have more of an air bus. And the heart of that is going to be basically a switch that uh, crosses over the airflow in the middle of the air bus. And that's the piece I'm going to make right now. I'm going to do a layered approach. All right, I have the pattern on the block here. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by drilling out the holes to the appropriate depth. Okay, it's cut into its separate pieces, and each piece is cut out. Holes in the end. Basically, it's going to cross over airflow. We have this to allow the path for the flow of air, not to cap it. The same on the other side, but opposite. Gonna swabbing the inside with the thin glue. Just make sure the grain. Doesn't allow the air to flow through. This one put the tops on right away. I'm basically going to just swab glue all over the inside. Good. That one goes on this side. 
clamp that in place momentarily. Okay, we have the um, finished air switch over for the Airbus. That's going to deliver air to the engine. Um, rather than using uh, the old style splitters that I used from my radial air engine here. So, there's a couple more pieces we're going to build for the Airbus. Basically the parts that are going to take the air in and out. Right. These are the blocks prior to cutting anything out. Um, the way I think I'm going to approach this, I'm going to cut it in half, put it in a vise, drill them out, then glue together over the tubes that I'm going to make. They'll go through. All right, I actually drilled them out first, then cut them in half, and then I uh, re-drilled them. So now I'm going to cut the tubes and glue them in place. Get my tubes cut. I start out by putting up, gluing them in here into this first. I have the Airbus complete. It's going to go right here. Before I hook it up, we're going to just run it once with the tubes that we had um, with the connectors and splitters we had created for the uh, radial air engine. And then I'll re-hook it up with the Airbus. We'll run it that way. This is the engine with the Airbus hooked up. I'll be the Airbus proved a little clumsy to build, but it does work. Not sure I would do that same design again, but it does work. It looks kind of neat. Those were the two main goals: reduce the rat's nest of uh, tubes going into the engine. Uh, the way this piece was made with layering the wood, making channels in there that could actually be incorporated right into the engine eliminating all the external tubes, but uh, that wouldn't really look very interesting. Alright, we'll just hook the shop back up here and uh, see you around. If it looked like the flywheel was slipping a little and changed direction, that's because it's very loosely put on here. The design doesn't really need a flywheel, but I had to run something to make it look more interesting. Where I go from here is I'm going to make an external control with a forward reverse and variable pressure for hooking up to external sources of uh, compressed air or CO2 to run the engine.